Well, good morning, it's Monday morning. I haven't even got my branded apron on, but I'm in a hurry. We are cutting a great big wholesale order for delivery to London tomorrow today. When we first came to Common Farm, part of what we did here was pretty much plant a wood. So it's a seven acre plot. We planted about half a mile of hedging, a lot of willow, about a 30 foot wide band of woodland going all the way around the property. And 14 years later, oh not 14, nearly 20 years later, we now have plenty of foliage for harvesting in the winter. And this is fantastic because as flower farmers, how are you gonna make a living during the down season? Uh, so we cut a lot of willow, we cut a lot of, today I'm cutting a lot of lime twigs, ivy, uh, grisolinia, bay, that sort of thing. Winter, greenery and foliage, and twiggery pokery. It's really important when you think about whether you're going to be a flower farmer or not, to think about, one, what kind of a flower farmer you're going to be, and I, it's very likely that you'll end up being more than one kind of flower farmer. So we are retail florists, on the one hand, and we cut lots of foliage and do wholesale on the other hand. And it's an interesting, there's a sort of slight uh, tension between the two jobs. Retail floristry is more fun. Making bouquets is more fun, but you have to do longer, slower work for different kind of money. So you, if you can work fast as a retail florist, you can do well. If you can cut fast as a wholesaler, you can do well. But you need to be able to do a lot of work quickly in order to make it all worthwhile. So we're cutting 1,500 stems today, and I'll show you as we go how it goes. Enjoy. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do press the bell icon, and you can tell us when you've got, we will tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks I give you along the way are useful, you can always buy me a coffee. The link to coffee buying is in the blurb to all my clips. Right, let's get on. Let's start with 400 stems of willow. So what we're doing is we're cutting into bunches and we're cutting the bunch, tying the bunches up as we go along because then it's quicker. It's all about speed. This is a lot to do in a day. So although we're not doing retail floristry, we probably are going to have a longer day because we've got more to do. Fabrizio likes to do his harvesting of a willow in obviously good tweed and a hand knitted beanie because tweed is very hard wearing and the hand knitted beanie reminds him of happy days in Cornwall. There we go. And here is Santa's little helper, Tea Cake the Border keeping very, very much in charge and making sure to repel all borders. Right, on days like this, we start early and then we break for breakfast and we call it morning tea at about 10.30. So breakfast coming up. What do I wear for this kind of work, you ask? Well, this felt hat came from a tourist shop on Route 66 in Arizona in about 1999 and cost, I think, $6. And what an investment. It's pure wool and it's lasted ever since. I then have a navy blue shirt and I have a friend called Elaine at Elaine Miller Design in Sherbourne. And she makes me these shirts out of very hard wearing linen. Um, and they are amazing. And I wear them and wear them and wear them. And when they wear out, I bring her up and she makes me another one. Vintage Hermes, if you don't mind. And I'll tell you, what, I have a collection of vintage Hermes scarves which came from a jumble sale uh, which my mother was helping at in about 1974 somebody arrived with a suitcase and just left it and so mum and her friend Adine who's my godmother opened up this suitcase to discover it was full of Hermes scarves and mum went oh thank you very much I'll just put a couple of shillings shillings in the pot here and I'll have the Hermes so that was I've got them all upstairs and aren't they lovely this is an Eribe sweater made uh, in Scotland and it is much too good to wear for gardening but like the tweed 
It's hard wearing, not going anywhere, breathable, lovely, cheerful colour. Old, very, very old, toggy, somewhere there's the, there we are, toggy. I think they're New Zealandish. Uh, gilet, you might call it a gilly or a gillet, depending on where you come from. Um, obviously, the Common Farm Flowers apron made for me many years ago, many years ago, and I'm always thinking I must get more made. Uh, Marks and Spencer's jeans of great comfort. I'm a size 16, and Marks and Spencer's size 16 fits me perfectly. Uh, Marks and Spencer's jeans. Obviously, underneath it all, a thermal vest from Damart, <laughs> because quality will out. Again, about 25 years old. And Merry People boots. These come from Australia, and I love them. They come in all different kinds of colours. Anyway, there's a hashtag that goes with this, and it's called Flower Farmer Chic. Um, obviously, <laughs> wearing a silk Hermes vintage scarf to do your harvest your ivy may sound a bit odd, but let me tell you, I'm amused by it. And this is hard work. So, so long as I can keep myself amused, then I will keep going. The gloves, town and country. We are harvesting a lot of ivy today. Uh, we've got lovely long strings and my lovely clients, Peter Nursery, did ask if we had some long bits. They've got a big wedding. Um, we wouldn't normally take so much ivy off the side of the house, but we've got to maintain the house and stop it getting all over the gutters. It is an amazing environment for small birds and bees and insects. So we probably won't harvest at all next year. It's a myth that ivy strangles trees. If you have ivy growing up a tree, leap for joy and celebrate. So Fabrizio is ostensibly clearing the gutters, but it means we can harvest this ivy. Don't just go grabbing ivy from any, anywhere, certainly if it doesn't belong to you. He is up a Niwaki ladder, it's a fantastic ladder, using a wolf garden pair of loppers, which we've had for over 20 years. And he's wearing very, very worn out muck boots. When your trolley is piled very, very high, take it slowly on the way back to the studio for fear of losing the load. After a while though, it's hot work for the vintage air mares. Right, a bit more willow harvest. The nice thing for the Petersham uh, customer is that they can be sure that anything that they buy from Petersham Nurseries, which has come from us, has been grown sustainably and also harvested really carefully. We don't just take a chainsaw to the whole place <laughs> uh, or use any machinery. It's just me and Fabrizio and loppers. And so that way, if there are bird's nests or there are hedgehogs or there are any other people, any spare twigs are put into heaps so that there's room for people to live. Spot the heap on my, over there. And, but equally, we're quite careful the way we do it because then, A, the product looks good but the point of our uh, farm, which is that if you look after the invertebrates, the rest of the food chain will look after itself, is, you know, we're staying true to our ethos. There you go, a little virtue signalling. But the thing about virtue signalling is it's often, it's true. It's true. People go, oh, they're just virtue signalling. But this is how we live and this is why we do it. You know, you've got to be honest about this stuff. And also live by example a bit. Wool. <laughs> Wool. Hand harvested. Go on, give it a go. It's our lovely pussy willow. It's a black stem. And you see these purrs, we call them purrs, which are like buds on the stems. When they're taken into the warmth, they open up and make these gorgeous silvery pussy willows. So these are going up to Petersham and in the warmth of West London, they will open up and be silver and gorgeous. And I expect if there are any over, overwintering bees in that neck of the woods, they'll come and take 
the nectar and the mm. pollen from the not nectar pollen because these will be covered in yellow pollen and here we go we've got it over <laughs> look at the bounce in that troll trolley oh rickety rackety meanwhile next to the grisselinia i'm harvesting if only you could smell her. This is port sunlight. So when I'm harvesting outside at this time of year, I'm shouting because I'm not wearing my microphone. I tend to cut and bundle at the same time. Raffia, like this. I'll see if I can film it without it looking really silly. quite an efficient way it's quite an efficient way to do things I've got my bundle I've got my raffia it's like wrapping Christmas presents tie round flip it and tie it up. Pull off the ends. And there you have it. Nicely wrapped and very good exercise. Bends your knees. Right, so that's quite a lot of ivy, quite a lot of grisselinia. The curly willow's not going. Quite a lot of bay. <laughs> and quite a lot of willow. And now we've got to fit it all into the van. And we have to work at speed because it's mid-December. And if we don't get a move on, it'll be dark. It's not just that, you know, it's a working day and we've got to get a lot done. It's going to be dark. So enough chat. The light's going. We need to hurry up. So the willow's gone in first. <laughs> then the bay has gone on top of the willow. The grisselinia is going beside the willow. And now we have to make room for all that ivy. And then the ivy is <laughs> filling up to the top. And the brown paper has just gone round the long pieces so we know where they are, so that we're careful when we take it out. <laughs> I think we've dropped one. <laughs> right, it's 20 past three, getting dark, van full. Time to go for a walk uh, with the dog, who actually also needs exercising. But just out of interest, a day like this at Common Farm, I've done uh, 12,000 steps and not left the place. <laughs> so if you're looking for a job where you keep fit, take plenty of exercise, have plenty of fresh air, I recommend flower farming. Also really good for the hairdo. Mm. And if you've enjoyed this clip, please do subscribe to the channel, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks along the way have been helpful, you can always buy me a coffee. The link to buying coffees is in the blurb to all my clips. And um, I love the coffees because they reassure me that the clips are interesting enough <laughs> to be worth something to people. There you go. Uh, and then I make more clips. Right. Onwards and upwards. Bye.